If you've seen pictures of lithium being mined by starving slave kids in the Democratic Republic of Congo, boy, have you been seriously misled. Lithium is an absolutely amazing element with incredible properties, making it ideal for rechargeable batteries. You may have heard it being used as a passion killer, given as treatment to people with bipolar disorder and inmates at mental asylums, used in nuclear bombs, mixed with aluminium and magnesium to make stronger, lighter alloys that we use for planes and spaceships and cars. But what is it? Why is it used in EV batteries? And more importantly, where does it actually come from? Well, spoiler alert, it's not Africa. And it's not mined by miners or minor, minor miners. Well, you know what I mean. Dave takes it on. Today, lithium. Well, billions of years ago, long before the Earth formed, there was, well, nothing, according to scientists. Then, in a massive explosion, everything was created. The first element was hydrogen, but that was totally unstable. It loved joining on to other things. Well, hydrogen then fused together to become helium, atomic weight 2, giving us our largest fusion generator, the Sun. I don't know why scientists are spending billions trying to make fusion work on Earth when we have an absolutely massive free fusion generator that appears every day. Free. No pollution. Anyway, then came lithium, atomic weight 3. And lithium is a metal, as the ending implies. Sodium, calcium, potassium, lithium. Now, being number three element should have made it the third most abundant element in the universe. But like hydrogen... It loves joining with other elements. In fact, so much so, it does not exist at all in its metallic form. And it makes it only the 26th most abundant element in the universe. But that is absolutely massive. If exposed to the air or water or steam or vapour, it instantly burns, forming oxides or hydroxides. It needs to be stored under mineral oil. So discovering it round about 1800 was problematic. You make it, it disappears in a flash of smoke and flame. But they persevered, and soon they tamed it and learnt about it. Although no metallic lithium exists naturally on Earth, it is absolutely everywhere. Apart from, strangely enough, Africa. And there's not much there at all. It is in the soil, in the rocks, and massively in the sea, because it's so highly soluble. The sea contains around 250 billion tonnes of the stuff, so if you've been told there's not much left, that's just not true. The Earth's crust is 0.002% lithium. That's even more. There's plenty of it around. The largest known reserves in the world are Chile and South America, followed by America, Australia, Finland, Afghanistan, Czech Republic and home room for Cornwall. Yeah, Cornwall has massive reserves of lithium and the Cornish miners are back in business. More on that later. We have 24 parts per billion lithium in us, in our bodies, as do all plants and animals and organisms. I told you it was everywhere. John Cade is reported to be the psychiatrist who discovered his properties for treating depression and bipolar just after World War II. Then recently, someone discovered it's brilliant in rechargeable batteries. It has very low mass, very high power to weight ratio, while a lead acid cell can generate 2.1 volts, zinc carbon 1.5 volts, lithium cells generate 3 volts. Where do we get it from? Well, some of the lithium comes from China, Bolivia and Argentina, second largest producer, after Australia, which is the world's largest producer, as opposed to who has the world's largest supply, which is still Chile. China is a very distant third place, and America a dismal sixth. In terms of reserves, how much raw material you have, it's Chile, Australia, Argentina, China, USA and Brazil. Now, Elon Musk has stated that there is enough lithium in one single state in America to produce all the lithium you, well, he, could possibly ever need for batteries. He recently opened a lithium mine in Texas. He says he has analysed the processes and discovered a quicker, cheaper and more environmentally friendly method of turning the raw material into what he needs than exists today. Quicker, cleaner, cheaper 
If he succeeds, it will dramatically lower the price of lithium-ion batteries and clean up the environment. That would be very interesting to see how that goes. Well, the real problem with lithium is it's not ready, readily available in the form which we would need it to be in to work in batteries. It must be refined. And it is the refining that is in critically short supply. It can take a decade or more to get a new mine up to speed, and then the refineries start producing. So it is sadly lagging behind demand. It will catch up. So how do lithium-ion lithium batteries actually work? Well, like I know. I did find a few resources that explain it far better than I can. I'll list those below. And in the meantime, here's a little sample. By the way, don't let the reported glut of unwanted lithium-ion batteries fool you into thinking there's a demand problem. The demand is incredibly high, but it too is lagging behind production. Tesla Mega Factory in Nevada is running flat out making mega packs for grid connected storage and they have a three or four year waiting list. They can't make them fast enough. The Gigafactories are also working flat out producing unbelievable efficiencies and output and still they can't keep up. Now again, don't let the scaremongers worry you about Tesla demand. My video on Ford killing the UK car industry, well link is down below, states that despite the phenomenal success of the Model Y, now the best selling car in the world, Elon regards that as a premium family saloon. It's not mass market. His mass market target is the sub $25,000 Model 2, being made shortly in Mexico, and production lies likely to be added to Shanghai, Berlin and Texas later. Any demand issues will instantly evaporate the day that is released around the world, particularly if, in America, it qualifies for the $7,500 IRA subsidy, bringing the cost of a brand new Tesla Model 2, for want of a better name, down to $17,500. That's cheaper than most used ICE cars. Any glut of batteries or materials will simply drive down the price for Tesla to snatch up, but not yet. The new factory is not yet built and won't open until 2024 or 2025. The new production lines will follow in a few years, probably beginning 2025, 2026. Well, back to lithium. In Chile, they use the sun, like in solar desalination, for evaporating off the water to concentrate the lithium. Unfortunately, their final stages are, in many places, hugely damaging to the environment, involving toxic chemicals and hazardous waste. Who ever heard that before? Oh yeah, a bit like the oil industry. But that's no excuse for polluting. Business always looks for cheap, and if you find cheap, you'll find cheap labour and health and safety standards that are poor or non-existent. That has to change. That must stop. Well, enter Cornwall, one of for the UK. One of the properties of lithium I mentioned is that it's incredibly soluble. And lithium is in all rocks and seawater. Now, over 4,000 years ago, Cornish tin miners were digging out tin and selling it to the likes of Egypt to turn their copper tools and weapons into bronze, altogether much stronger and superior. That I find an amazing fact. Cornish tin has been traced to Egypt when the pharaohs ruled. Well, later, in the UK, tin was used for dishes, plates and jewellery, and later still as a lining to steel cans, to stop the steel rusting on the inside, making them suitable for storing food. Tin mining was once the mainstay of Cornwall, well, along with smuggling, but mining on a commercial scale effectively ceased about 40 or 50 years ago, and once the mines, that extend out several miles under the sea, turn the pumps off, driven by those huge wheels you still see on the skyline, they began to fill up. Today, the old tin mines are mostly, almost totally full of seawater that has spent several years dissolving even more lithium out of the surrounding rocks to make it a really rich source of lithium. No mining needed. That was done thousands of years ago. 
Cornish Lithium is a company set up to extract lithium, cobalt and tin using environmentally friendly and sustainable processes. They now appear to be world leaders in using electrolysis with electricity generated by wind or solar and geothermal power and have attracted massive funding to explore turning this into a full-on commercial venture. Well, if we clean up our act, have regard for nature, and get over our, well, the world is there for us to exploit and profit from at any cost attitude, we could turn lithium production green. Battery chemistry already uses less, or in some case none, of the really damaging cobalt and chromium and other metals previously used, which were once dug out of the ground by slaves. Well, think ahead. We have our very own nuclear fusion generator, safely 93 million miles away, giving us all the energy we could possibly ever use. It also produced all the lithium we could possibly ever want. We should use some of each cleanly to produce highly efficient batteries to store in grid-connected megapacks for use when the sun has set. We can end up with a clean, green, highly efficient energy supply that will last as long as the sun shines, well, or until we screw it up in our incessant desire to make disgustingly huge sums of money and profit so that the few can pass it on tax-free to their heirs. Now thanks for watching to the end. If you like this video, please subscribe, and if you want more, please consider becoming a Patreon member to support us financially. You see, when I say us, it's actually just me and my eldest lad, Jonas. Not some giant production company. We use our own cars, our own video equipment, and far too much of our own time. Your financial support would be most welcome and gratefully received. I'm Dave.